Hello there. I've been wanting to do a video for some time now to answer one particular argument that I've heard a few times, both from friends and relatives, and it goes something like this. Even if Jehovah's Witnesses didn't have the truth, I would still want to be a Jehovah's Witness because it's the best way of life, or it's the best way of living. So I want to answer that argument from three different viewpoints. First of all, from the viewpoint of a child. Second, from the viewpoint of a parent. And third, from the viewpoint of someone who isn't a parent. So let's say you're a Jehovah's Witness child, and I can speak from experience because I have grown up as a Jehovah's Witness. And as was demonstrated recently by the horrendous Become Jehovah's Friend DVD, Jehovah's Witness children grow up with this seemingly endless list of things that will make Jehovah sad. Um, whether it's a certain kind of toy, or a certain kind of film, or a certain kind of TV show, uh, certain kind of cartoon characters, anything practically can make Jehovah sad. And that does not, in my view, do any particular good to a child's psychological development. You're also uh, raised to have nothing to do with certain common celebrations that other children are involved in, such as Christmas and birthdays. And the birthdays one in particular is completely ludicrous because Nowhere is there any real reason given for not celebrating birthdays from a biblical perspective. The other thing is that children, when they go to school, must go not just to learn, but to preach. And to highlight this, I've, um, I'm going to read a couple of quotes from Kingdom Ministry articles. The first one is from the October 2011 Kingdom Ministry. The title of the article was, do not hold back. And it begins by saying, have you ever held back from witnessing at school because you were afraid that you would be ridiculed? It certainly takes courage to speak up, especially if you are shy. What will help you? Use good judgment. Although school can properly be viewed as your personal territory, your personal territory. Remember that you are not expected to initiate spiritual conversations with everyone as you would when preaching from house to house. Use good judgment to determine when to speak. And another reference is from the August 1998 Kingdom Ministry, which is entitled Take Advantage of Your Schooling. And it says, Be a good witness. Why not view school as your personal territory? for informal witnessing. During the coming school year, you will have unique opportunities to witness. You possess wonderful spiritual knowledge that when shared, can save both yourself and those who listen to you. So ordinarily, when children go to school, they go predominantly to learn. But when witness children go to school, it's not just to learn, it's to preach. School is supposed to be your personal territory and that has got to be wrong. When you go to school, you go there to learn. Also, when you're a witness child, you are raised to believe that Armageddon is going to happen at any moment. It literally is just around the corner. And if you don't believe me, this is the book that Jehovah's Witnesses currently read to their children, get them to study and it's called Learn From The Great Teacher. It looks quite harmless. There's a picture there of Jesus surrounded by children. You're probably looking at it thinking, what could possibly be sinister or inappropriate about a book like this? Well, if you turn towards the end, page 243, you're presented with this image of fireballs raining down from the heavens, Jesus and his angels coming to slaughter people, and terrified women and men running for their lives. This is literally what Jehovah's Witnesses are presenting to their children at the moment. And what that does is it makes the child think that it's school friends, it's school teachers, basically anyone it comes into contact with who isn't a witness is doomed to destruction, is somehow inferior or unworthy in terms of uh, having a happy life. And then when you combine that with the fact that 
they're going to school with the impression that school is their personal territory. They're not just going to learn, they're going to pass on information. They're going to badger their schoolmates with their own indoctrination. What you have is a recipe for a terrible, terrible time in school. It's a perfect storm for bullying. Because not only do you have the poor attitude towards other people in the witness, but you also have behaviour that is making them stand out as different. Not celebrating Christmas with people, not celebrating birthdays with people, preaching to people when they have the opportunity. And speaking from experience, that does lead to bullying. I was bullied as a child because I thought that I needed to um, shove my faith in people's faces at any opportunity. And as a result, I was bullied. But let's say the child manages to survive school, get through all of that, doesn't get bullied too much. Um, what are their options once they leave high school? Well, they're not allowed to pursue further education. Um, or at least further education is seriously looked down on by witnesses. So immediately you've got um, future aspirations, future opportunities seriously hindered by Watchtower's insistence that higher education is, is a, some kind of temptation from Satan. That aside, what else have you got? Well, I've written a, an article recently, and I'll put a link in the description, about how the governing body members seem obsessed with getting parents to baptise their children uh, from as early an age as possible. And what that does is, once the child becomes baptised, I was baptised at the age of 11, and Anthony Morris recently uh, said that you know parents should even be blackmailing their children if they reach the age of 16 and they're still not baptised. So let's take that age bracket from 11 to 16. If a child gets baptised within those ages, there's the every likelihood that once they reach the ages of 17, 18, that they're going to do something that falls short of Watchtower's very, very high standards. And as a result of that, they're going to get disfellowshipped. And then what are their options? Well, the likelihood is that if they're old enough to leave home, they'll get booted out of their house and shunned by their parents at a time in their lives when they need their parents' support and love and understanding most. This is what awaits a witness child um, as a result of child baptism potentially. And this is where witnesses would say, oh yes, but um, witness children have the best possible start in life because they're raised not to take drugs, they're not going to have unwanted pregnancies, they're not going to get some kind of sexually transmitted diseases. Well, if you seriously believe that only Jehovah's Witness children steer clear of drugs and only Jehovah's Witness children don't believe in sexual promiscuity, then I'm sorry, this video is not for you. You would need to be an extremely stupid and narrow-minded person to believe that only Jehovah's Witnesses make responsible parents. Only Jehovah's Witnesses raise their children to become responsible adults, to take accountability for their actions. Raising children to become responsible adults does not rely on religious belief, but simply on good parenting. And you can be a good parent whether you are religious or not. So let's move on from children. Let's say you're a Jehovah's Witness parent. Well, if you're a Jehovah's Witness parent, you have, to, you have to subject your child to all of the things I've just mentioned. That's the first point. The second point is that I'm, I'm unaware, I don't know exactly how much you know about the, how rampant child abuse is uh, in Jehovah's Witnesses. But when you take your child to the Kingdom Hall for a meeting, or when you take it to a field ministry arrangement, what the current Watchtower policies regarding child abuse mean is that you have absolutely no assurance that the brother, for example, that sits your child on his knee is not a pedophile. And it sounds like I'm being alarmist now, it sounds like I'm being sensationalist, but that really is how it works. Because elders are, are urged by the Watchtower Society to treat accusations of child abuse 
first and foremost as a sin. So they won't, for example, say to witness parents who come to them and say, oh, Brother Jones has, um, has abused our child. They won't necessarily say, oh, well, you should definitely go to the police and let us know what happens. The first thing they will say is, well, leave this with us, leave this with us, and then they will go and, and ring the branch. So what all of this means is that witness parents have absolutely no guarantee, no guarantee at all, that there aren't pedophiles in their congregation and that's something that they seriously need to think about. A witness parent also needs to be able to look at himself or herself in the mirror and say I will let my child die rather than let it have a blood transfusion. No moral person would do this or would say this unless they were under influence from a higher source that was claiming to have God as its authority. And finally, just let's say you're a parent watching this video and you've posed the question in this video, which is, well, I'm not, e even if it's not the truth, even if it's not the truth, it's still the best way of life. So let's say that you are open to the idea that Jehovah's Witnesses don't have the truth, but you still think that being a witness parent is the best way of life. You need to raise your children to believe that Armageddon is coming at any moment. You need to raise them to believe as fact, as historical fact, that Jesus Christ came to the earth between 1914 and 1919 and chose a man who history knows to have been a racist, a bully and very possibly an alcoholic. Chose that man, Joseph Rutherford, to be one of his first members of the faithful and discreet slave class. You have to teach your children that that actually happened, that it's fact. You also have to teach them that God exclusively uses an organisation that has a proven track record of lying to its followers, of double standards, of withholding information, of misrepresenting its own historic beliefs, of making false predictions, of hypocritically allying itself to the United Nations, the very organisation that it condemned in its literature. You have, to, you have to teach your children to be subject to such an organisation. You also have to teach your children that God for decades has been feeding wrong information to the Watchtower Society only to have that replaced with new information, with new light at a later stage. So God is essentially a liar. You also have to teach them to spend the rest of their lives trying to convince people of other religions that they should change their religion while at the same time refusing to look at their own beliefs from, a, from an objective point of view. You also finally have to convince your children that the governing body are representatives of God taking the lead in his earthly organisation and that they should obey any instructions and let me quote from the Watchtower 2013 um, November 15th whether these appear sound from a strategic or human standpoint or not you have to teach your children that that is acceptable that we should completely throw our loyalty and our blind obedience on an organisation that wants us to obey anything they say if you're willing as a parent to raise your children in that way, then, then fine. But I, for one, absolutely refuse to raise my children uh, to those standards. But let's suppose you're not a parent. Let's suppose you have no intention whatsoever of having children. Or maybe you've had children, but they've grown up, they've flown the nest, and they're now masters of their own destiny. You will still be required to shun any relatives who are disfellowshipped, including those who have left the organisation simply for conscientious reasons because they no longer believe it to be God's organisation. You've also got to be prepared to die on a hospital bed simply because of Watchtower's ever-changing rules on blood transfusions. You have to make donations as well to an organisation that takes that money and under the under the banner of worldwide work, spends at least some of that money on child abuse settlements, 
on lawsuit damages arising from its mishandling of child abuse. So if you really want to spend your money in that way, then hey, it's your money to throw away. But I, for one, um, have a little bit more regard for how I spend my money and I don't want it to go to protecting pedophiles. Perhaps the most disturbing thing though is that you're not allowed to just keep your beliefs to yourself. You have to go around and tell people to, to follow your religion, to become Jehovah's Witnesses themselves. Regardless of whether you have doubts over what, whether it is the truth or not, that, that is what you have to do. Um, and that includes encouraging children to go through that experience I've just described and parents to go through what I've just described. You need to encourage them down that route. You have to, by the very nature of being a Jehovah's Witness, export your beliefs to others. And this includes making sure that future generations wind up with precisely the same problems that I've just described. And finally, I would say that whether you are a parent, not a parent, a child, your time on this planet, regardless of your beliefs, is extremely precious. You only get one life. Is it really worth wasting even a second sitting in a kingdom hall or walking up a driveway and pushing a bell if it's not really the truth? And this is the whole premise of the video. What if it's not the truth? Is it still the best way of life? Well, no, it's not worth wasting even a second if it's not the truth in preaching, in attending Kingdom Hall meetings when there are so many other ways that we can be bettering our lives, contributing to the world around us, than going along with what an organisation tells us to do, a large part of which is roping other people in to making the same mistakes that we've made. It just simply is not worth it. So to all those people who say, oh, it's still the best way of life, no, it isn't. And frankly, have you even tried other ways of life? Have you thought that there might be more to life than what is presented to you by the Watchtower Society? I would strongly urge you to try thinking outside the box, thinking surely I can be happy outside the confines of the Watchtower Society. And believe me, you can. So, thanks for watching the video.